Welcome to renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine. This is part two. I'm about to remove one of the cylinder covers so I can get at the pistons because the pistons are definitely blowing. And here I encounter the first problem. Or problems. Two of the cylinder bolts will not release. I need these to come off so I can remove the cylinder cover and they're just spinning round. It's not a good start but it's very common and nothing to really worry about. So I carry on and I remove all the nuts that come off. Sometimes they come out with the stud, that's not a problem. Then I'm left with these two. So I try putting a pair of pliers on them and pulling them and then I use a chisel to chisel them off. You need much experience to do this, you have to put a lot of pressure on very quickly. If you're too ham-fisted you'll do major damage, so if you've never done this before, practice chiselling off a few nuts and bolts on something that's not important. I can't see any other way of doing it, because it looks like the cylinder cladding has been put on by tapping rivets into the cylinder. Now the cylinder cover's been removed, it's time to remove the piston. The piston rod is held into the crosshead with a simple pinch bolt. It seems to do the trick, but it's not the way I would do it. But having said that, this is just an ornamental steam engine. It's not designed to do hard work. So I suppose a steel bolt threaded into the crosshead, pressing on a nickel silver piston rod, is more than sufficient to hold the piston to the crosshead. And here's the piston. It's quite usual on engines of this type and this age to have cotton in the grooves. And this is no good really, it wears far too quickly. I've always used graphited yarn, and in more recent years, silicone rubber. So I'll take out the cotton, and the grooves are very, very shallow anyway. And I'm going to machine the piston to take a standard o-ring. The bore of this cylinder is one inch in diameter. And here is the re-groove piston, fitted with a one inch outside diameter silicone o-ring. Normally refitting a piston is a very simple job, but this was difficult, it would not go in. Then I found all the string that was in there, or cotton, it's very fine stuff. And once I pulled this out, the piston rod came through fine. I simply replaced it with some proper graphited yarn. I was going to use an o-ring, but I thought, no, I'll be a traditionalist. Mainly because I've got some proper graphited yarn that I unpick from a full-size piece of graphited yarn. And it's really good stuff. A quick tip, as you can see here, on tightening gland nuts, I do not know why people put hexagon nuts for gland nuts in small inaccessible places, when it's much easier to have a plain gland nut with holes drilled around the outside, so you can put a tommy bar in to turn the gland. Anyway, this one has got hexagon nuts, as you can see, and people normally use a screwdriver to sort of chisel the thing into place. I use a piece of mahogany that does more or less the same job, because I'm not trying to tighten it up too tightly anyway but it does it without marking the brass. I might make a very fine spanner to tighten these gland nuts, it will be easier. So here, I'm refitting the piston rod to the crosshead with the pinch bolt, as you can see, and then I'm going to refit the cylinder cover temporarily, just using three of the nuts, and give the engine a run to see how it goes. And even though this is just one side, the result is dramatic. It sounds entirely different, and the engine has much more power. The other cylinder is still blowing of course, as I can clearly hear, so what I'm going to do is repeat the process on the other side. I don't think I'm going to bother re-videoing this part of it, I'll just do it. After repeating the process with the other cylinder, all the nuts were fine on that one thankfully, the engine now has much more power, even though the valve timing is still slightly out. I'll put that right later. But it's running quite well, it's a much harder sound, and it really has a lot of power now, I would not like to get my fingers in the flywheel or in any of the moving parts. Whereas before, it had about as much power as a small mammoth. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with small mammoth steam engines, except they are small and they're not very powerful. That's it for part two, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.